back. Told you I would be. So, kind of fix that paddle issue I had. And today my plan is, so we got the box. We got the side little pieces figured out. They're working. I got them working good. Um, the next component is something I have done before. I am going to put a combination lock on top of the puzzle box. And it's gonna be five different dials that you have to use a decoder to figure out. Now I'm not gonna put this big decoder in there. What I'm gonna do is make you use one of the dials as the decoder on top of the box to figure out what the answer is. So I'm gonna make five different dials on there uh, and I'll show you in a second how I designed that entirely with inside of a uh, light burn. Uh, but the goal is once those are all lined up, the back panel on the box, instead of going side to side, I'm gonna make it so it comes out. And when you pull it out, that will remove a block that will be behind both these sides, preventing you from being able to push it down. So as you pull it back, it'll move that block out of the way and then you can depress the button and slide the box open. Uh, I think I'm gonna be a little sneaky and I'm gonna hide the key to the cipher in a fake serial number on the bottom of the box. I enjoy hiding stuff in plain sight. So uh, there'll be a scrambled message on top that you gotta figure out which letters are important. And the way I like to hide letters that are important is capitalize them. Once again, make them obvious, but it's only the capitalized letters that shouldn't be capitalized that matter towards the puzzle. So, uh, I guess first I gotta find out what the what I'm gonna do for a code. Uh, but in the meantime, let's get into Lightburn and design this lock. All right, see you over there. All right, so now that we're inside of Lightburn, first we need to figure out the, the dimensions of the box. So here I have the outside dimensions and then the inside from the frame I had already created. Now, uh, while looking for assets to put in there, I realized I already had that in a light burn file. So here in a second, I'm gonna have to do it all over again. So there's my, my dial setting, which I already have saved from a, a cut file for making uh, the little cryptex dealios and stuff. I have another video on making those. And once again, if you want the file for that, I'll make it available to you. Uh, and then just kind of get them centered, get them where you want them to be, make sure that when you have it all done, they're going to fit, uh, check all your files, and then I am actually going to just copy this and make it again because I need to make other files that sit underneath it. And I don't need all the assets from it. I just need the outside bits and those circles, and I will take those and shrink them or make them bigger for whatever I'm doing. And you can see me doing that right here. Obviously, I'm shrinking them. Uh, but you're also going to need the path in which the rods are following. So the little pieces in the middle that are being cut out at the end are actually going to be the ones I'm using, which will cause me problems later down the line. All right, so I got all the pieces for the top lock cut, and we got our, uh, you know, our top plate, our middle plates, and our base plate. That will be the one that will move. So the way this works is you're gonna have two plates like this, and these pieces sit in there, and when they rotate, let's see if I can get this better looking over here. So it's just a simple little piece in there like that. And when it rotates, it's locked. The piece can't move. So once all four of them get in line, this back plate here will have these doubles in it and they'll be poking up so they can slide out, revealing the back. Now to get it to stay in place, the way I designed them, they're all slightly different sizes. So if I place, make sure I got myself lined up correctly, these two on top of each other, you can probably see just a little bit, there's a little bit of an overhang in there. 
so that top piece, when it sits in there, it sits flush, can't go anywhere. And for the back piece, that one is even larger. So you kind of create a little bit of a sandwiching effect of those pieces in there so they don't fall out. And the great thing is, this is how thick the whole lock is. That's it. Then this plate here, we held on the bottom. And when it unlocks, you'll slide that and it'll slide back in place. And let me uh, move the back out. So let's go ahead and get all these glued together. And hopefully I don't screw up because these take a long time to cut on a little diode laser. So I'm at this point right now. Vial and little back pieces. Uh, so the problem is um, they need to be able to rotate. So I have to take all five of these and make them fit to where they, they, they rotate properly without getting bound up so I don't put everything together and have a knob go, oh, you won't turn there. Um, yeah, it takes quite a while. So instead of showing you or showing me to you sitting here doing this for about three hours uh, and constantly checking, um, I'll just catch up with you guys uh, when this part is done. It takes a long time. All right, so I've now reached the very crucial point where I need to put these little guys in the back and glue these over top. Now I have to make sure I have the right answer lined up with each one when I do it. And once I do it, it can't be undone. So I'm gonna try to show you as best I can how I do it, but I kind of got to line that up in there and keep it off the sides, then hold it, and then glue that in there and try to keep it as centered as possible without letting glue squeeze out the sides because if it does that, um, you're screwed. So it's a tiny bit of glue to hold it in place, then I'll flip it over and I'll glue on the inside a little bit too. Uh, yeah, it's fairly delicate because once you put it on, you can't take it off. So let's see if I can't figure out a camera angle to show me doing that.
All right, so the point we're at right now, after getting that top plate all done up, ready to go, still need to clean those buttons up a little bit on the back side to make sure they're moving smoothly. But I mean, right now, all I want to do is glue this to the top, but I can't do that yet. So next, I need to make the actual drawer that's going to go on the inside. And the reason why I don't want to glue this down yet is I want to be able to have as much access in there as possible while basically fine tuning where that will sit, where the spring in the very back is going to sit. And then once I have all that figured out, how far back that drawer is going to sit, I can get the pieces for that lock that are going to engage and disengage from the sides all measured out. So first, I'm going to take a bunch of measurements of this and I'm probably going to laser cut the box because you know what? It's snowing like crazy out right now and it's really cold in the garage. I don't feel like going through the process of making a proper drawer. So I'm going to laser cut a drawer. Yeah, call me lazy. All right, so this might be a weird cut jump here because I was going to just design everything inside of uh, my laser burning program. And I remember there's a website called MakerCase uh, that just lets you design these. Uh, you just plug in all the sizes, the dimension of your wood, and it makes the files for you. So I did that instead, so you won't be seeing that. Uh, then I also went out in the garage and I got the front and back panels. This is just some cedar, um, which I'm probably, I've never done it before. Uh, I'm probably gonna try to do a French polish on them at the end, make them super shiny. But right now what I need to do is I need to get the front plate on here. So that way when it's in and it's buttered up against it, nice and uh, flat, I can figure out on the back side where I need to have my catches lined up with. And I'm also gonna have to put some sort of rails in there. Um, I'm gonna need some rails on the side to help guide it in so that way it's not wonky because if one catches and one doesn't catch, it's, going, it's not gonna work. Uh, so I need to make some sort of rail to hold it in straight as it's going in to hold it and I'm not gonna use uh, like drawer slides or anything like that so i will uh i will figure that out that's what half of puzzle making is honestly it's coming up with an idea and figuring out how to make it work uh yeah so that's the next step let's make this drawer fit i'll put a spring back there and i'll make sure that these buttons whoo, push the drawer out let's do it Originally I had mentioned I was going to make the uh, supports go on the side, but I decided I couldn't do that because that was going to interfere with the piece that catches on the lock. So I came up with this idea, just make a simple little slot on the bottom to keep it lined up as it goes in. Uh, yeah, and you know what? It worked. Really worked. Uh, but then I had to go through the whole process of trying to make sure the sides catch correctly. And everything's working and guess what it's still not working uh, so that's still gonna need some more refining and fine-tuning and all that good jazz but once I have that pretty much figured out you know put stuff on and off time for the lid and I found I only needed a little tab because there's two tabs on the inside of the box that hold up the front side or actually the back side uh, and this going on the front uh, works just fine holds it in place and it limits uh, 
interference with the drawer, which is all I really wanted to do. So yeah, just making sure it works, make sure everything slides, make sure everything fits, put the combination in and then glue it in place. Lock it down. Yeah. Yeah, don't worry. This, this video's uh, almost done. Now, I, I got this back piece uh, that is going to attach to the back panel and to the little slidey bit. That's what's going to let it move. So that's what's going to keep it in place and let it move all at the same time. And being that I just made pieces without a plan to start with, uh, I got to remove a lot of material. I don't want to remove too much because uh, this 3 mil plywood for the laser is not strong. Uh, it will be strong when it's all together and everything's glued together. Uh, but yeah, get it all lined up, get everything figured out and put it in place. Yeah, and this is the last time I'm going to be able to access the springs on the inside of the box uh, for those. So I figured, yeah, I better glue the bottoms of those springs down just using some CA glue. It uh, doesn't need a whole lot. You just got to keep them from moving. And yeah, we push it in and we test it 100 times and then we glue the top on. Finally. Uh, hope it wasn't too early. Okay, so that's going to be the end of today's video, or this week's video. This is taking way too long to come out. Uh, I'm still not 100% done because I'm still not 100% satisfied with this. Uh, for one, I still got to make the plate for the bottom. And these are not fitting as well as I would like. Um, so I'm going to cheat. I've already been working on designing these pieces that will go as trim pieces around the top of it. But I haven't gotten the fit just right, so I need to redesign it for a fourth time and uh, just make them look cool. So I'm going to do one more video on this and that'll be all the fit and finish stuff and showing it working. Uh, and I'll also show you how I make those cool little knobs. Uh, it's actually pretty easy. It's a nice little easy trick and anyone can do it. Uh, that's the thing. I don't know what I'm doing. I just figured it out. So yeah, uh, if you want to see more, uh, come back, come back again and see some more. Uh, after I get done making the next video of doing all the fit and finish on this, I am considering just making a few videos that deal nothing, deal with nothing but the design of some different mechanisms I've come up with and maybe redesign them so that way I can make them into 3D printable files uh, instead of just pieces of wood I randomly cut and make them more universal so that I can use them in other puzzle boxes and other designs. Yeah. All right. Hopefully you liked it and uh, see you next time.